Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the knee joint and discuss a few of the extracapsular ligaments, those being the patellar ligament, the fibular collateral ligament, or LCL as it's often called, and tibial collateral ligament, or MCL. Okay. And we're going to talk more in detail about these second two, and we'll come back in the, uh, one of the next couple of videos and talk in more detail about the patellar ligament and also the patellar tendon and how they function with the patella. And we'll also identify the PCL and ACL, but we'll talk about their functions more in a separate video because these are not extracapsular. So what does it mean to be an extracapsular ligament? Well, the knee joint is a synovial joint, as we discussed in the previous video. And being a synovial joint, it has a joint capsule, a very strong, very tough joint capsule. And if a ligament is to be extracapsular, it has to exist and function outside of the joint capsule, at least outside the walls of that joint capsule. And three of those extracapsular ligaments are the patellar ligament and then the LCL and the MCL. So first, let's talk about the patellar ligament. The patellar ligament is a continuation of the quadriceps tendon. I'm going to go back to this slide uh, very briefly. So here's our patella right here. We're looking at a lateral view. In green here is the patellar ligament. Okay? We see the patellar ligament is continuous right here with the quadriceps tendon. So up here, proximally to the quadriceps tendon, we of course have the quadriceps muscles. They insert on the quadriceps tendon, which inserts on the patella. And then the patella is kind of meshed in here with the tendon and the patellar ligament, and the patellar ligament inserts on the tibia at a spot called the tibial tuberosity. Okay? Now, the patellar ligament is the patellar ligament. That's this specific part down here. Sometimes this quadriceps tendon is referred to as the patellar tendon. And so the patellar tendon is different than the patellar ligament. Okay? even though sometimes they're used interchangeably. And the reason there's a difference is because there's a difference in the definition of a tendon and a ligament. Recall that a ligament connects bone to bone. Well, the patella here is a bone. It's a sesamoid bone. Tibial tuberosity is bone. So the part that connects the patella to the tibial tuberosity is by definition a ligament. So it would be the patellar ligament. A tendon, by definition, connects a muscle to a bone. Well, the patella would be the bone part, and then up here somewhere we would have the quadriceps muscles, quadriceps femoris. And so therefore, this red part up here would be a tendon. And so usually, just to make sure that we understand the difference, this is called the quadriceps tendon. You can call it the patellar tendon, but just make sure that the patellar tendon you differentiate from the patellar ligament. They are one continuous structure, but we divide them into two regions based on the definition of tendon and ligament. So in this picture, we're looking at an anterior view of the knee. Up here we have the femur. Uh, this over here is actually the medial femoral condyle. This is the lateral femoral condyle, and I will explain in just a little bit how I know which side's lateral and medial. Down here we have the tibia, and approximately right here under this patellar ligament, this would actually be the tibial tuberosity where the patellar ligament inserts. Now, what they've done here is they've taken the patellar ligament, here's the patella and the quadriceps tendon, and they've basically taken it from where it's up here and kind of just folded it down. Okay? So I know this part's the patellar ligament because it's the part inserting on the tibial tuberosity. Now, normally the patella would be up here, Okay, and then the quadriceps tendon or the patellar tendon would be up here. So what they've done is they've cut it and kind of flipped it over so that we can see all the contents here of the knee joint. Okay, but this is our patellar ligament, the patella, and then the quadriceps tendon or patellar tendon. Uh, one thing about the patellar ligament is that yes, it is a continuation of the quadriceps tendon, as I mentioned here, and it kind of meshes around the patella and holds it in place, and generally it strengthens the anterior capsule of the knee, uh, really just because it's on the anterior surface of the knee. And also, due to the function of the patella and the fact that the patellar ligament holds the patella, uh, the patellar ligament plays a very important role in knee extension, and like I said, we'll come back to that in the next video or the video after that and talk about knee extension and how the patella and the ligament and tendon uh, facilitate that movement. Okay. 
Now let's talk about the contents of the knee joint. Here we have our PCL, or posterior cruciate ligament. Here's the ACL, anterior cruciate ligament. And for now, just understand that they are intracapsular ligaments. We'll talk about these more in the next video and also how to differentiate them, because uh, how do you tell the difference between the PCL and the ACL? We can see them both in the same view. We'll talk about that in the next video. Okay. Over here, we have the medial meniscus. Here's our lateral meniscus. And we'll talk about the menisci in more detail in a future video as well, but it suffices to say for now that what the menisci do is their structure increases the concavity of this tibial condyle surface. And so without this particular meniscus, uh, this femoral condyle would not be as deep into the tibial condyle. Remember the tibial condyle is concave. And so what the meniscus does is it actually is thicker around the circumference and so it actually increases the depth of this concavity so that way the femoral condyle can sit in that concavity more stably it fits deeper into that okay and both of these actually do that both menisci now that leads us to the other two extracapsular ligaments those are the LCL which is over here and then we have the MCL over here so how do I differentiate the medial side from the lateral side well, if I could take the femur off and look down on both menisci, so have a superior view of these, that would be easy. Because uh, it turns out that the menisci are actually shaped a little bit differently in terms of their curvature. We'll talk about that when we look at the menisci in more detail. However, if all I have is this, I can actually tell that this is the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament, because it is not connected physically to its corresponding meniscus. Okay, so. Over here, the LCL, this is actually the fibular collateral ligament. Um, that's because it actually runs beside the fibula. Um, it actually extends from the lateral epicondyle of the femur, that's this structure right here, and it goes down to the lateral surface of the head of the fibula, which we can't actually see, but we can see this little bulge right here, and that's what we assume to be the head of the fibula. Okay, So that's our LCL. Now, uh, the LCL is the only ligament that's partially fused with the capsule on its superior end. So on the superior end, it does fuse with the capsule, and it strengthens the lateral side of the capsule, but the differentiating thing with the LCL versus the MCL is the LCL does not physically attach to the lateral meniscus. Okay? Notice there's a space right here between the LCL and the lateral meniscus. If we look over on the medial side, Here's our MCL. The MCL is also called the tibial collateral ligament or medial collateral ligament. This one extends from the medial epicondyle up here down to the medial surface of the tibia, okay, which would actually be down here. Okay? And what we see with the, the MCL is that it does come into contact with the medial meniscus, and that's very important in differentiating these two. MCL physically connects with the medial meniscus, and the LCL does not. And as for the reason why the LCL does not come into physical contact with the lateral meniscus, you'll actually see that in a couple of slides. Let's take a look at another view. Um, here is another anterior view of the knee. So over here, this is our lateral femoral condyle. This is our medial femoral condyle. Of course, this is our tibia down here. Over here, this is the medial side. This would be our medial meniscus. Medial meniscus increases the concavity of the medial tibial condyle so that the medial femoral condyle has a greater uh, depth in which to sit, which increases the stability a little bit. Over here, here's our lateral meniscus. Here's the lateral femoral condyle and the lateral tibial condyle. Okay. Over here, we have the posterior cruciate ligament and anterior cruciate ligament. PCL and ACL. Those are intracapsular. We'll cover those in more detail in a future video. Okay. Um, down here, here's actually the remnants of the patellar ligament. So this down here is the tibial tuberosity. All of the rest of this has been cut off so we can see what's in here clearly. But if we follow a normal patellar ligament up, patella would be roughly right here. And then the patellar tendon or quadriceps tendon would extend superiorly or proximally. Okay. Over here, this is our medial collateral ligament, or MCL. If we look really carefully, we can see that the MCL actually does fuse with the medial meniscus over here on the medial aspect. Okay. 
Um, down here, this is the pezanserine insertion. Pezanserine, if you're not familiar with it, is a common insertion point for three muscles. We have the semitendinosus, the sartorius, and the gracilis. Okay, so that's the insertion of these three muscles. It's on the medial side, just medial to the patellar ligament. Okay. We also have here the iliotibial band, which actually inserts on the lateral side of the tibia, and it's partially covering the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament. Recall that the LCL extends from the lateral epicondyle of the femur over here down to the lateral surface of the head of the fibula. And the lateral collateral ligament, again, does not come in contact with this lateral meniscus right here. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now let's take a look at a posterior view. This is a posterior view of the knee. Okay, um, over here, this is going to be our medial side. And again, we should be able to tell that pretty easily because here's one of our menisci. And this particular extracapsular ligament is physically connected with this meniscus. Therefore, this has to be the medial side. So here's our medial femoral condyle, medial tibial condyle. This would be the medial meniscus, and this would be the MCL, so the tibial collateral ligament or the medial collateral ligament. Right? Here's our PCL. This is our ACL, anterior cruciate ligament. And then we have the lateral side over here. Again, we could have just looked at where the fibula was because the fibula is always lateral. But again, we can see that this particular ligament does not physically connect with the corresponding meniscus. Therefore, this is the lateral side, even if the fibula was gone. So here's our LCL, lateral collateral ligament, or fibular collateral ligament. And then this would be the lateral meniscus right here. Okay. Now, for the very last picture we're going to look at, we're actually going to see one major reason why the LCL does not physically connect with the lateral meniscus. So again, we have a posterior view here. Uh, this over here would be our lateral side. This over here would be medial. Uh, here's our medial meniscus, medial femoral condyle. Here is our uh, medial tibial condyle. This would be the tendon of semimembranosus. That's another one of the hamstring muscles. Okay. This over here is our MCL. This is our medial collateral ligament. And again, we can actually see that it is in direct contact with and fuses with the medial meniscus right here. Okay. Over on this side, we have the LCL, lateral collateral ligament. And again, it may look like it's pretty close to the lateral meniscus, but notice there's a structure in between the LCL and the lateral meniscus. And that's this tendon right here for the popliteus muscle. So this is the popliteus tendon. The popliteus muscle we'll see in future videos is a muscle that unlocks the knee, in particular during knee flexion. Uh, that might not make a lot of sense right now, but it suffices to say this muscle is actually going to produce a little bit of rotation of the knee. Okay? And so its tendon actually runs between the LCL and lateral meniscus. And that's one of the major reasons why these two structures are not fused with each other. Okay? And then a couple other things here that are a little bit irrelevant, but we'll just cover them. Up here on the medial femoral condyle in the posterior aspect, we have what's called the adductor tubercle. That's actually a little ridge here on the medial uh, femoral condyle. And then the adductor magnus muscle will actually insert there via this tendon on the adductor tubercle. Also, this is the uh, origin, I should say, of the medial head of the gastrocnemius. All right. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of these three extracapsular ligaments of the knee. There are some others that we'll cover in future videos, but these are three of the major ones. In the next video, we're going to talk in more detail about the cruciate ligaments, ACL and PCL, which are intracapsular ligaments. Um, and then after that, we'll talk about the menisci. And then we'll talk about what kinds of forces can cause particular injuries to the knee. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.